Now, we are joined by a very special guest on the show. Vikram Sarabhai is known as the father of the Indian Space Research Organization. In fact, Vikram Lander is essentially named after him. Kartike Sarabhai, Vikram Sarabhai's son, joins us this afternoon on the show. Mr. Sarabhai, good afternoon. Thank you for taking your time and joining us here at Mirror Now. My first question, Mr. Sarabhai, to you would be, what has been good your afternoon. reaction? You must have been following for the last 40 days the entire journey of Chandrayaan-3, and now we are inching closer. A few more hours to go before India could script history. What does this essentially mean for you? Well, I think um, it means very much what it means to most people in India. We are all hoping for the best. We are all proud of our scientists, our engineers of ISRO, and we are looking forward to and wish all the best of the success. So far, we've been successful, and it's wonderful to see the success of Chandrayaan 2 also uh, being able to help in this in terms of selecting the right place to land and others. Uh, last time, of course, as you know, uh, the last landing where, was where there was a hitch, but I hope this time we goes without a hitch and our people have worked very hard for it. So we are all proud, like all of us here, um, for what we have achieved. Absolutely, Mr. Sarabhai. How does it feel that your father's dream perhaps is now making history? Vikram Lander has been named after your father. Your father has been the one founding the ISRO. And now, of course, with the technological advancement, India is all set to be amongst the top four in the world to be able to reach moon. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic achievement. And I think what we must remember is that um, uh, Vikram Bhai's dream of, uh, of space in India was very closely connected with... Uh, with, with the country's development and using space at that time for things like remote sensing, for predicting climate, uh, for education, for point-to-point -point communication. So he mentioned it often that he's, we are not in a race to imitate others, but we will develop our own unique program. And that's in fact what we have done. We've taken our time, we've found a completely different solution to how to go from the Earth to the, to the Moon. It's a very cost-effective, way, but it, it, is, it represents the confidence with which we have, which is not to better someone, but to, but to do it slowly and steady. But I think it's remarkable uh, where, we have, where we have achieved, and I think it, it is a dream come true that this is happening, and the dream will continue, because the ultimate dream is uh, not only reaching the boundaries of space, but also the development of this nation. Well, you put that very interestingly, Mr. Sarabhai, that it's not essentially to compete against other countries in the world, but for India to be able to chart out its own journey as far as developments and uh, perhaps reaching great milestones in the space research. How do you see India poised today at the cusp of creating history? Because uh, the Prime Minister is there as Johannesburg and the world leaders are going to be surrounded by him. But clearly, as far as India being able to soft land at the South Pole of the Moon is concerned, how significant do you think is that as far as, uh, you know, uh, putting India on the global map? Well, I think in many ways over the last few years, India is on the global map. But India is also being seen increasingly as not only leading in many of these fields, including this very global problem of climate change, but importantly as a developing country, which still has, our Prime Minister has said, over the next 25 years or so, by 2047, we want to be a developed nation. And in that, in that journey, in that quest, uh, we are leading uh, not only the people of India, but also other developing countries. And our space program is specifically geared uh, for this, uh, for helping development, how, helping agriculture, helping a number of other educational issues. So I see India's achievement as being able to impact several other countries which may not have their own space program. But through our space program, I think we can provide a very different type of uh, space program alternative 
uh, than what some of the developed countries can do, whose missions were very different. Land a person on the moon was, was a mission in its own right. We are going, for instance, to completely uncharted territory of the southern uh, part of the, of the moon. Uh, we have been able to find that there are traces of, of water there, maybe the other minerals. So we, we see the thing in a very different perspective. And with that perspective, our program is, is, is developed and we are very proud for that. Well, absolutely. We are proud for that in India, Indians across the world, everybody waiting for uh, four past six this evening. As if all goes well, we are going to be scripting history, Mr. Sarabhai. But if you could tell us a little more about um, uh, Vikram Sarabhai's uh, vision for India. Did he ever try and tell you or perhaps in a discussion, if you could narrate a few anecdotes from there? Because India being able to achieve this feat is massive despite Chandrayaan-2 having failed. The recent uh, Russia's lunar mission, Luna 25, was also <coughs> unsuccessful. And now Chandrayaan-3 is out there to land with just a few more hours to go. How, how do you try and uh, see this today when you have seen your father having a vision for India's space missions? Sure. Before I come to that, let us clarify that Chandrayaan 2 had not failed. Only the last lander did not make it. And I think we learned a lot about science. And I think our prime minister was very gracious in, in understanding that in, in the way he consoled the space program. Of course, of, of course, if the last thing doesn't happen, we think it was a failure, but it is not. Even today, Chandrayaan 2 is helping us locate the location. So let everyone know that Chandrayaan 2 was not a failure. It was scientifically a great achievement, but the last thing didn't work. So I think that just for the record. I think, um, a personal incident, for instance, I, when I left for studying abroad to Cambridge in, in the United Kingdom, I was very convinced that I was going to do physics and mathematics. And uh, this was something my father did, and that's what I knew he did also. But I really got started getting involved. Bihar had a major drought, and I started getting involved in developmental issues. And I started talking to him, saying that I want to change from pure science to development communication and development. And that's when I really saw the other side of him, which was so deeply into, into developmental issues and, and seeing how he saw the fact that he saw that most people needed the scientific temper, a scientific way of solving problems, critical thinking, many things which we are today talking in our new education policy, that science is the base for, for a rapid development strategy. We saw it during COVID that science alone could, could sort of catch up to these things. So he was very much interested. I remember days when, as a student, I remember one meeting in Delhi, I was standing, sitting right in the back, and he was discussing and explaining how satellites could be used for education and reaching the reaching remote villages where even a road didn't exist and, and giving people a chance for the best education. And people were asking him, why is the Department of Space or Atomic Energy uh, getting involved in education and communication? You should be doing research. And that understanding at that time was not there, that these are linked things, that space can really, can really help. Today, maybe children know how, how you can remotely do this. That was also a time when America was not using these things because they had a huge investment in terrestrial systems. And that's when he was talking about the concept of leapfrogging, that India does not have to follow step by step what others have done, which as we know today with more knowledge of climate change, is that these are the fossil fuel based development strategies are really not sustainable. So we have to find our own ways and in that use our own science and leapfrog. And I think those seeds which were, which were sown there continue today, not only in ISRO, but in many other fields. Also, what is so wonderful about this uh, event, which, is, which we are all looking forward to, is the fact that different parts, different components have been built by different labs in, in India, all across India. There, there's a whole amount of teamwork which you don't see when you just see the lander. But that lander represents a whole ecosystem of research, engineering, industry behind it. And that's how we have, we have been able to put this thing together. So I think uh, it, it's also so inspirational for, for children, for all of us, to see that we can really do that. So there are many aspects of 
Vikram Sarabhai in his dream, which is really part of this, uh, this, this whole thing. But, but he loved science, even for its own right, but was seeing the application of science for society and for development. Well, absolutely lovely, Mr. Sarabhai, to hear it from you, the dream, the mission, and the vision, perhaps, that Vikram Sarabhai had for India as a space missions. Thank you so much, Mr. Sarabhai, for taking your time and joining us over here in, in, uh, at Mirror Now as we are going to watch India's Thank script history today with the Chandrayaan 3's launch at the lunar surface. All right.